Chapter 10 Sam watched the Porsche fade into the distance before re entering her shop. She still needed to finish the repairs for Rose, even though Rose had insisted there was no hurry. But now that Brent's car was fixed, she had no reason not to work on it. Plus, she needed the money. Brent's repairs would get her through another month, but she needed to get more customers coming in, and word of mouth was the best way to make that happen. Since Rose was a bit of a gossip and ran the only flower shop in town, it might mean a spike in business. The bell above her door jingled, and she glanced up. Had Brent decided to stay after all? Excuse me, are you Sam Jenkins? A man she didn't recognize, dressed nicer than most folks in soda spurs, stood in her doorway. Yes, I'm Sam. What can I do for you? The man smiled and waved to someone unseen. Before Sam could react, two more people flooded her shop, one holding a camera and the other a microphone, which was shoved unceremoniously in her face. I'm Gary, with the Star Gazette. We heard Brent McCasson was staying here with you. Are you two an item? What? No. Sam shook her head and tried to hide her face. He was just here getting his car fixed, and he's gone now, so you can leave too. Is he coming back? Did he tell you about his next movie? The man continued firing questions as Sam pushed them out of her shop and locked the door. She leaned against it and shook her head. Maybe it was a good thing Brent had left after all. If this reporter knew he had been here, it probably meant more were on their way. And Sam had no desire to be in the spotlight. With a sigh, she pushed away from the door and popped the hood of Rose's car to begin her inspection. When she finished, a glance at the clock showed closing time. At least she'd have the house back to herself. Not that Brent had been a bad roommate, but it was her space, and now it would be quiet and the way she liked it again. She opened the door quietly and poked her head out first, but no reporters were in sight. Still, she wasted no time locking the shop and racing to her truck. As she pulled into the driveway, she noticed her steps no longer appeared the same color. What happened here? She stepped out of the truck, looked closer, and realized the wood was different. She could have replaced them herself. However, with starting her new business, all other aspects of her life had been shoved to the back burner. Moisture pooled in her eyes at the thoughtfulness of Brent, and she sniffed the tears back as she tested the steps. No more sagging, no more squeaking. After inserting the key in her front door, she told herself one more time how much she'd enjoy the quiet. But as she opened the door and the silence answered her, she doubted the truth of the statement. Sam dropped her keys on the side table and wandered into the kitchen. Not a dish was out of place. His presence still lingered, a hint of his cologne. If she closed her eyes, she could almost smell the woodsy scent. Hoping the odor would be stronger in the spare room, she meandered down the hallway and opened the door. The room appeared pristine. The made bed held no wrinkles. No trash littered the room, and the bear he had won her sat prominently on the pillow, a white slip of paper peeking out from underneath. She unfolded the paper as she sat on the bed. Dear Sam, thank you for opening your home. You helped me find my muse. I hope our paths will cross again, and if this story ever amounts to anything, I'll send you a copy. Maybe you'll find time to read this one. Brent McCasson. She smiled, remembering the conversation about her mother's books. Sam placed the note down and grabbed the pillow, holding it to her face. His scent was stronger here, but by this time tomorrow, it would be gone. And all she'd have left of Brent McCasson was a note and a silly stuffed bear. What was wrong with her? She had no time for men, 
especially not rich actors who lived in the city and were constantly hounded by photographers and autograph seekers. She stood, dropping the pillow. A walk, that was what she needed. A walk would clear her mind, get it out of the clouds and back where it belonged. After locking her door, she headed down the farm market road with no particular destination in mind. However, she was not surprised when she found herself in front of Fanny's porch. I figured you'd be by to visit me. Fanny didn't bother looking up from her knitting. Sam smirked softly as she leaned against the railing, wondering how this woman perceived so much. Was your room really taken? The needles paused, and Fanny pinched her lips together. Sometimes we need to be uncomfortable to realize God's will for us. God's will? Sam couldn't help but sound skeptical. Brent left today, Fanny, so if you're thinking God's will was for us to be together, that's not happening. The needles resumed their rhythmic clacking. Things aren't always what they seem. God has a plan and a purpose, even when we don't understand it at first. Well, the only purpose I can see is that it showed me I miss companionship. The elderly woman didn't answer, just kept clicking her needles. All right, Fanny, have a nice night. Fanny paused long enough to raise one wrinkled hand in a wave before refocusing on her needles. As Sam headed back toward her house, she passed Norma's, paused, and turned back. She had promised she wouldn't eat out so much, but she was hungry, and there would be people inside. It was a start at getting involved. Norma greeted her with a wave as she stepped inside. Sam returned it and sidled up to the counter to order a burger and fries before claiming an empty booth. Only a handful of other people filled the mostly empty restaurant. How you doing, hon? Norma asked as she slid the food in front of Sam and her ample frame into the seat on the other side of the booth. She folded her hands on the table and turned her eyes on Sam. Sam offered a crooked half-smile. I thought I'd be happy, you know? He was so obnoxious when I first met him, but after the festival on Saturday and church on Sunday, I saw a different side of him. Dropping her eyes, she ran her hand up and down the glass of tea, watching the sheen of condensation disappear under her touch. I guess I hoped he would want to stay and finish his writing here. Did you know he writes as well as acts? Norma shook her head and patted Sam's arm. Did you ask him to stay? Sam let out an unattractive snort. No, in fact, I told him I only wanted to be friends. Why did I do that, Norma? Because you were scared, hun. We've all been there. Now, I only met him once, but he seemed like good people. Perhaps he'll surprise you and come back. Sam shrugged and grabbed a fry. Maybe, but I'm not holding my breath. Once he gets back to the city, he'll forget all about this town and me. Greg did, and we lived five minutes from each other. You can't compare him to a past relationship, hun. Brent is his own person with his own issues, but he's not Greg. Norma gave her a small smile and one final pat on the arm before scooting out of the booth and heading back to work. Sam knew she was right. Brent wasn't Greg, but it didn't really matter. He was gone, and she needed to accept that, forget him, and get on with her life.